Hello and welcome to another episode of 28 Days of Blackness. Today we have a very special guest with, here with us today and her name is Diana Jaquez. Today she'll be talking about the origins of the transatlantic slave trade and we're just going to get right into it. Um, where did this start? Where did this, this slave trade start? In 1502 in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, uh, they brought two slaves to see if they could withstand the labor um, and when they did later on uh, they decided in uh, 1510 to bring 50 slaves uh, from the African continent and they all came from different places like Zimbabwe, um, Guinea and other West uh, African places some some Southern African uh, pretty much all around the continent but nonetheless they um, brought the slaves from the African continent, 50 of them. Wow, and that's how they pretty much just kick-started slavery here in the Americas. Not too many people know that it actually happened in, um, you know, what is now called the Dominican Republic, um, which is also the first place that uh, Christopher Columbus had settled, correct? Correct, 1492. Also, the, uh, his son, Diego Colon, his home was the first place of the slave rebe rebellion in uh, the Americas in 1522. Wow. So the first slaves were brought to DR and the first slave rebellion happened in DR. Correct. And what was going on with the indigenous population at this time? Uh, the indi indigenous population was also being enslaved at this time. Um, they didn't feel that they were good for the work that they were putting them through and they were dying uh, in large numbers because of the diseases and, and the work that they were subduing them to. So, um, but Bartolomé de las Casas decided that it would be a good idea if we switched out the native um, Tainos, which are Native American as well, um, for the African slaves. And this was in 1515 that he decided to give away all of his Native American slaves and give the Spanish crown the bright idea that, you know, thinking about it, maybe these African guys, they're, they're a good uh, turnout. After seven <laughs> years of realizing that what he did was wrong, he then sent a letter to the crown saying that, you know, all slavery was wrong and it shouldn't be, but the institution was already in place. So Las Casas spent most of his life trying to right his wrong, not just in the Dominican Republic, but all of Latin America and in North America. He gave up his uh, title and he spent most of his life um, trying to help those that were in slavery. Um, he raised Enriquillo, who was, who to the Dominican Republic is, is a hero. Um, he was a chief of the Native American people, son of, I'm sorry, the nephew of Anacaona, um, who was also a Taino chiefess. And um, Enriquillo fought against the rebellion as well, along with Sebastian Lemba, who was um, an African slave who came from Zimbabwe. Um, we had a lot of people who came together who were allies to fight against the, um, the colonization. And wow. And so I just want to get this straight uh, because basically when you're talking about some of the, you're talking about the three main people, you have a Spanish priest, an African warrior, and a tribal um, native warrior as well. And the three of them came together. But when we say African, um, Taino, and Spaniard, isn't that normally what we get when we're talking about the people who would original, um, eventually become the, the whole of the island? Yes, we are a triracial people, um, which is, uh, brings us to the whole DNA thing. <laughs> when you do those DNA tests, it just proves just that. Most of us have um, a large amount of African ancestry, a large amount of uh, Caucasian or Spanish ancestry, and uh, Native American. A less, on a lesser amount of the Native Americans because, well, when Columbus came, he killed off a lot of them um, with the people that he brought on his ship. Um, 
yes, we are a tri-racial people and anyone in, in a family can look like me, like they could look like you and have the same parents. Oh, wow. And that is that is awesome. Um, we start to understand, you know, DNA, as you said, is um, giving us a lot of clues to all of our um, origins and stuff like that. And I guess the purpose of, you know, filming something like the 28 Days of Black is just to talk about that rich history. So, you know, are there any other firsts? Because we understand that we had the first rebellion um, and... Um, uh, DR. We also had the first slaves um, in DR. Um, but, you know, is there anything positive? Cathedral, schools, or anything? Yes. Any other first? We made the first cathedral in the Americas, the first university in the Americas. And our universities were not limited to a certain color or another. So a person of color could attend these universities. As a matter of fact, pe other people from other countries in the Americas that couldn't study in their home country would come to the Dominican Republic to study because they were allowed to. Um, we had the first hospital. We had a lot of the first because when Christopher Columbus arrived, he arrived to the Dominican Republic. So they, we were the first to be conquered. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have a lot of the first. We were also the first country of mixed race slaves to have their own government and country. Um, a privilege that you share with, uh, you know, the sister country, um, Haiti. Yes, yeah. most definitely. Um, we were once one country at one point. On se actually, in several occasions in history, we've been mm -hmm. one country. Um, they were the first country to be uh, to have their own government as well. The first mm -hmm. country in the Americas, because. People of African ancestry have had their own country way before of there was the Dominican Republic. But I think what we're talking more <laughs> along the lines of slavery, right? right to free right, themselves right. from oppression, to form their to own form country. Their own country, their own government, their own economy. Um, Haiti was actually very well off uh, economically until they started to help other countries free themselves of slavery. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't give Haiti a lot of credit. Yeah. Haiti helped the Dominican Republic, they helped Colombia, Brazil. The United States. The United States. The yeah. um, United States didn't acknowledge African Americans in a lot of instances as people. But for some odd reason, which we've seen in a lot of instances, if they came from another country, all of a sudden they were a person. So Haiti helped us facilitate um, African Americans making it to the World Expo. Wow. And that is that is definitely good and rich information to have. And you had hinted uh, to something that I don't think most talk about. When we talk about the rich culture, and we're talking about the Dominican Republic and, and of course, Haiti as well, but um, when we're talking about um, DR, not much is actually said about some of the influences of the Dominican Republic when it comes to the United States. Or is there any connection from the United States and DR, as we would know it outside of what people would have us believe when it comes to sports and baseball? Of course, there's many connections. I personally uh, descend from a woman of Samana, and Samana has a very deep connection to the United States and the people of African descent here. Uh, Frederick Douglass he had a program where you could come to the Dominican Republic if you were running from slavery or if you were a free black person who did not want to uh, live in the United States or in Liberia. So you could choose to live in Haiti or the Dominican Republic. A lot of them moved to Samana and are still there and thriving. Um, the, the community is called the Samana Americans. And along with the language, which still is spoken, they call it Caribbean English or you know, broken down English. Nonetheless, they still speak English. The churches are in English, schools in English. And uh, I believe until the 1800s, I'm not too sure, they were allowed to come in and out of the country. They were still considered American citizens. Hmm. Um, eventually that right was taken away. But um, yeah, I mean, Frederick Douglass has portraits of giving speeches in Samana. Hmm. And not so many people know about that. What about influences uh, as far as, you know, like um, contributing to some of the freedoms that we're able to share here in the United States, like, uh, you know, any war heroes or anything like that? Yes, we have Mr. Otis. Um, he was a Tuskegee Airman. Uh, he also fought in the civil rights movement. Um, 
he served in our country and we i mean we've had so many other people that we we don't discuss and i can't really think off the top of my head but we're so intertwined it's not even funny like mm-hmm. whenever whenever there's been an issue here with the people of color in this country the Dominican Republic has always come to the aid we just don't talk about it because well it's not convenient to speak about it because if we come to the realization that we are one people then that would unify us and there's a saying on the Haitian flag that says that uh, I know it in Spanish is la unión hace la fuerza unity makes the force mm. right so unity gives us power so if we realize that we are united, then we become too powerful. And that's something that if you even look on our country's website today, you will see that in many instances, they were afraid that people of color in the United States came into contact with people in the Dominican Republic or in Haiti because then they would realize that they too could own land Mm -hmm. and be free and have the same rights of white people here in the United States. So they made it their business to emphasize on our differences, which were just language. Because uh, culturally, we share a lot of the cuisines. Um, religiously, like, you know, we have voodoo and santeria in Dominican Republic, voodoo in Haiti, and here we have root work. But if you look at all three of the yes. religions, it's the same thing. Just that one is in French, the other is in Spanish, and one is in English. So, um, you know, we our governments have gone to great lengths to emphasize on things like language when really going back to the DNA thing, if we were do it to do a DNA, we're the same people. Mm. Because most African Americans descend from an English person, a Native American, and an African slave. So the only difference that we have is that our slave owners spoke a different language. Mm. And thank you so much for sharing that. We really, really do appreciate that. What is your message? Um, Like, how does what you've explained here today benefit our community? It benefits our community because I feel that if we know that the slave trade started in the Dominican Republic, then we realize that um, we all started at one place. The slave trade started in the Dominican Republic, which ties us all into this one spot, right? So, in other words, we were like the Ellis Island of the slave trade. Um, You Mm. arrived there, and then they decided where they were going to send you, whether that was going to be, you know, somewhere in North Carolina in the United States, somewhere in Kingston, Jamaica, in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, in San Juan, Puerto Rico, in Havana, Cuba, or wherever, you know, uh, they bought you, you know, to, to have you work in. And I feel that if we realize that we're more alike than we are different, um, that would bring us together. And our communities need that. I think that a lot of our children are not being taught this in school. It's like two lines about, oh yeah, we were once slaves somewhere down south. But they don't explain to you how that slave came down south or where that slave was before they came. Mm. You know, it's just a very vague history. And my father always tells us, um, you need to know your story because if you don't know your story somebody else is going to tell you so my quote to my children always is know your story so no one can tell you his story about you and that is awesome and I was literally just about to ask you for a quote but you, <laughs> you did it perfectly and thank you so much for the information that you shared with us Thank you for watching another episode of 28 Days of Blackness. We once again wanted to thank Diana, and uh, we appreciate you being here. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate being here. Till next time.